We're going to go over in detail how to solve for modified internal rate of return for both a normal and a non-normal cash flow stream. I'm using both Excel and the TI Business Analyst 2 in this demonstration. With Excel, we have a dedicated MIRR function, but we'll go through the steps manually as well. And I've included detailed instructions for the TI calculations. Before we look at any examples, let's take a close look at exactly what values we're trying to find to calculate MIRR. Assuming we do not have access to the Excel function, we need to have a clear understanding of how to find the values we need, more or less, manually. To find MIRR using standard TVM functions, we need present value and future value. Payment is going to be zero, N is going to be the number of cash flows in the cash flow stream, and we're going to solve for IY. So first, the easy case a normal cash flow stream with one negative outflow at time zero and a series of positive inflows. Finding the needed values for these is pretty straightforward. The PV we'll use is simply cash flow zero. It's our only outflow. The future value needed is called the terminal value and it's the future value of all inflows compounded to the end period. It is shown here computed manually though we'll look at a more automated way to find the terminal value. Note that each positive inflow is multiplied times 1 plus the rate raised to the power of N minus the cash flow N. In this example, our terminal N is 5, so cash flow 3 would be multiplied times 1 plus R raised to the 5 minus 3, future valued two periods. Summing the future values, that's our terminal value. With a non-normal cash flow stream, we have to be a little more careful in finding PB and FZ. The PB we need is cash flow zero plus the discounted value of all outflows. In this example, that means cash flow four discounted back to time zero. In computing the future values to find terminal value, we skip cash flow four, the outflow. We want a future value, the inflows only. Remember, outflows, negative cash flows, go to the left on the timeline back to time zero. Inflows, positive cash flows, go to the right on the timeline to the end. In either case, normal or non-normal, once we have the correct PV and TV values, we can use basic TVM functions or keys to find the MIRR. Our first example is a normal cash flow stream, one outflow at time zero and a series of inflows. Present value is given, it's cash flow zero. The terminal value can be found using the TVM keys or functions or manually raising each value to the appropriate power. With PV and FV, we can use the TVM keys or the rate function to find MIRR. The Excel MIRR function is shown below the example. Note that this function requires two rates, a financing rate, FR, and a reinvestment rate, RR. The financing rate is the discount rate applied to outflows. For a normal cash flow stream like this, it's irrelevant because we've only got one, CF0. The reinvestment rate is the rate applied to values to find the terminal value, the future valuing rate, so to speak. For our examples, both rates will be the same. Solving for MIRR in the TI requires a few extra steps to find the terminal value since the TI does not solve for the future value of an uneven cash flow stream. So the first thing you need to do is solve for NPV using the cash flow worksheet with cash flow zero set to zero. I've already entered these values in our cash flow worksheet and computed NPV. To find the terminal value, we want to take that number, make it negative, and put it in present value. N is 5, IY is 10, payment is zero, compute future value. And there's our future value. Now we have the present value, 6,000, make it negative, N is 5, payment is 0, compute IY, and there's our MIRR. Okay, that was the easy one. Let's look at a non-normal cash flow stream. Using the same values we use for the normal cash flow with CF4 made negative. This demonstrates using the TVM keys or manual calculations to find the future value of the cash inflows. Note, CF4 is not future valued. We have to discount CF4 and add it to cash flow zero to find the present value to use to find MIRR. Again, once we've found both of those, we're ready to use the TVM keys again. 
in the TI, we find the terminal value much the same way as with a normal cash flow stream. We can use our cash flow worksheet again, but let's go through and change cash flow 4 to 0. NPV down compute. And there is the present value of our cash flow stream. Make that negative. Payment is 0. N is 5. IY is 10. Compute future value. And there's our future value. Now in this case, we have a few more calculations to make, so we need to store that in register 1. The negative cash flow in period 4 must be discounted back to time 0 and added to cash flow 0 to use for our present value. We need to discount our cash flow 4, the $1,000, back 4 periods, IYS 10, compute present value. To that, we want to add a negative 6,000 and put that in present value. I'm going to recall 1 and put that in future value. N is still 5, payment is 0, compute IY, and there is our MIRR. Hopefully these examples will give you templates to follow when computing MIRR for either normal or non-normal cash flow streams. Remember, outflows are present value, discounted back to time 0. They go to the left on the timeline. Inflows are future value, compounded to the right on the timeline.